What's going on guys? Since the beginning of Genshin, we've been conditioned to run either an elemental or physical damage goblet on basically every character in the game that deals damage, and that attack percent goblet should only be used until a replacement can be found. While that is still the case in a lot of situations, there has been a meta shift in Genshin that makes attack percent goblets on par or even better than elemental damage goblets for some builds. Overall, I think this is a huge win for players as it reduces some of the RNG in the goblet artifact slot. Without a doubt, I have made mistakes in my journey of Genshin Impact, throwing away 5-star artifacts with main stats I didn't ever anticipate using, so my current attack percent goblet options are limited. In fact, I've been fishing for an elemental mastery goblet in literally any artifact set for ages, and there's a good chance I foddered one when I was earlier in the game and before I had an elemental mastery scaling character. In this video, we're going to be talking about when you should consider running an attack percent goblet and why this is coming up now. I see this question come up all the time in the forum, so I would like to give my perspective on this topic. More specifically, we'll talk about how damage is calculated, why attack percent goblets are now more viable, diminishing returns with stacking a single stat, characters that you can consider running an attack percent goblet on, and how weapons, artifacts, and team comps influence the goblet slot. Artifact stats can be very specific to your builds and teams you're running, so a general understanding of the topic should help you make better choices for your account. I'm going to try to keep this video short and informative, so let's get right into it. In order to figure out which stats to run on a character, you need a basic understanding of how damage is calculated. The damage equation gets pretty complicated, so we'll just look at it in a basic form. The outgoing damage from a character that scales off attack is calculated as total attack times the scaling on their ability times one plus all percent damage bonuses. All damage bonuses, whether they are elemental damage, burst damage, normal attack damage, or others are additive, so keep that in mind. If the hit is critical, this whole equation is multiplied by one plus the critical damage of the character. When we look at the damage an enemy actually takes, we also have to account for the defense and resistance of the enemy, which we cannot control and we do not need to worry about this for this discussion. So really, the character stats we can control are attack, damage bonuses, crit rate, and crit damage, along with talent levels. If you want to do more damage, level your talents, that is simple. As far as crit goes, if you're building a character for damage, you generally want to invest heavily into these stats, but like attack and damage bonuses, neglecting other stats and not properly balancing crit can also lead to diminishing returns. For the purpose of this video, we will assume an average level of investment in crit rate and crit damage to remove them from the discussion and focus on attack and damage bonuses. We'll come back to this shortly, but first I want to talk about why I'm now discussing this topic. Throughout most of version 1.0, we saw a pretty consistent mix of sources to boost damage in the form of attack, like from a two-piece gladiator set, another party member with a four-piece noblesse set, character ascension stats, weapon passives, or a character like Bennett, normal and charge attack damage, like from a four-piece gladiator set, rust, the black sword, or Klee's first passive talent, elemental skill damage, like from the festering desire, stringless, or solar pearl weapon passive abilities, elemental burst damage like from the two-piece noblesse set or weapons like the stringless, and elemental or physical damage like from two-piece artifact sets, weapon substats, and character ascension stats. Defense and resistance shred, as well as elemental mastery transfer, are another way to boost reaction and non-reaction damage, but do not affect the discussion. Even with all the damage bonuses that were possible until recently, the majority of characters usually did not have more than around 100% total damage bonuses, with an average build looking something like 15% elemental damage from a two-piece artifact set, 46.6% elemental damage from a goblet, and maybe 30% additional damage from a weapon or four-piece artifact set, putting us right around 100% total. Sure, there are exceptions, but they're not as common, and it is much more likely to see a huge attack buff from a character like Bennett. So what has changed? On top of the unique scaling some characters have, we have also gotten a new artifact set, the Emblem of Severed Fate, some new powerful weapons, and Kazuha, who gives the team a significant elemental damage bonus. The new Emblem of Severed Fate set can give up to 75% burst damage alone. Kazuha can transfer an elemental damage buff roughly equal to a 5-star goblet if built with full EM, and then we still may be running a weapon that gives around 30% additional damage. If we add an elemental damage goblet, we're at nearly 200% damage bonus. This is just one example because we also have characters that gain elemental damage with Ascension, others that give damage buffs like Mona or Ganyu, or Ayaka who gains damage bonuses with her dash and skill. 
During the 2.1 live stream, MiHoYo mentioned that Raiden Shogun will convert some of her energy recharge to electro damage bonus. We've already seen this with Mona, who converts energy recharge to hydro damage bonus. I've made a video on how the emblem set is very strong for Mona, and we can assume that this is Raiden's signature set and will be her best in slot. You may have heard that there are diminishing returns building into a single stat. While this is mostly true, the diminishing return comes from building into one stat while neglecting others. This is where the attack percent goblet comes into the picture. If some characters are naturally getting 150% to 200% damage bonuses, building more into elemental damage and therefore not building into more attack can result in an overall loss of damage. This graph shows the concept pretty well. You can neglect the overall damage numbers, but look at the trends. To put this graph together, I only looked at how changing the goblet stat affects different types of builds. At the left of the graph, we're running an elemental damage goblet, and at the right, we're running an attack percent goblet. The middle of the graph would be a split of these stats. For a normal build, you can see that an elemental damage goblet will give more damage. When running a character with Bennett, or likely Sarah in the future, you'll have a lot of attack, and therefore building into attack over damage gives very diminishing returns. Alternatively, if you already have a lot of damage bonuses before the goblet, 100% in this case, an attack goblet can give more damage than an elemental one. And if you're stacking a lot of attack and damage, you can likely build into either stat successfully. I wish I could give a definitive point when to consider an attack percent goblet, but it is very dependent on your build and team. But in general, if you're running Bennett in your team, you're safe to use an elemental damage goblet. If you already have a high damage bonus and a lack of attack percent bonuses, you're safe to run an attack percent goblet. If you're not running an attack percent sands and do not have an attack percent substat on your weapon, you can likely run either goblet with good results. And if you're running Kazuha on your team and your character has elemental damage scaling, you can consider running an attack percent goblet. If you really care about min-maxing, I highly recommend using a damage calculator or testing multiple options on your characters. I'll link the damage calculator I frequently use in the description. Let's talk some general characters that can make use of an attack percent goblet. Based on MiHoYo's description of Raiden Shogun during the livestream, she's likely a character that can use an attack percent goblet, as she'll want a lot of energy recharge and will scale heavily into damage with her signature artifact set and passive talents. But without knowing Raiden's actual stats, this is something we'll have to look for when she releases. If Sarah is really waifu Bennett like described by MiHoYo and you're running her with Raiden, this may change her build as previously discussed and is something to keep in mind. Mona is a similar case in patch 2.0 when built with high energy recharge and the Emblem of the Severed Fate artifact set as a typical freeze comp damage buffer. At 220% energy recharge, Mona gets a 45% hydro damage bonus from her second passive and 55% burst damage from the four piece emblem set. My current Mona build is using an Energy Recharge Sands and Hydro Damage Bonus Goblet with an R5 Widsith. I did several tests on the Pyro Regis find to determine if an Attack Percent Goblet or Hydro Damage Goblet gave more burst damage. I did make sure not to proc the Widsith's passive when performing these tests. My Attack Percent Goblet has 12.3% Energy Recharge and 18.7% Crit Damage. Because it is nearly impossible to have equivalent substats on different artifacts, these tests were conducted with two different Hydro Damage Goblets. The first Goblet has 5.8% Crit Rate and 9.3% Attack, and the second Goblet has 7.8% Crit Damage. Without a crit, the Attack Percent Goblet gave more Burst Damage than Hydro Damage Goblet 2, but less than Hydro Damage Goblet 1. When I did crit, the Attack Percent Goblet won out in both cases. In general, the Attack Goblet is on par with, or slightly better than a Hydro Damage Goblet for this build, and I would simply recommend running the piece with better overall substats. This is just a net positive for players because it gives more flexibility in the spot and reduces some of the RNG in artifact farming. Other support characters equipped with an Energy Recharge Sands, Emblem of the Severed Fate set, and High Energy Recharge can also use an Attack Percent Goblet in some situations, mostly when not run alongside Bennett. The characters that come to mind are Beidou, Sing Cho, and Shang Ling. In addition to Raiden and Mona, 5-star characters like Yomiya, Ayaka, and Zhao can make use of an Attack Percent Goblet with certain builds. Zhao is the classic example of a character who gets a ton of damage bonuses when his burst is active, meaning he can be lacking in attack and can be built with an Attack Percent Goblet depending on your overall ratios. 5-star characters have a high base attack, meaning Attack Percent substats are more valuable. In Yomiya's case, when equipped with an R5 Rust and her signature artifact set, her normal attacks get a 130% damage bonus, which is pretty massive and can lead you to invest more into attack. 
Everything is dependent on Team Cop, of course, and if you're running Bennett for an attack buff and Pyro Resonance, a Pyro Goblet will win out for Yomiya. In Ayaka's case, she gains separate damage bonuses from her elemental skill, her dash, artifact set, and also synergizes well with Mona and Kazuha, both of which provide damage buffs. On top of this, her signature weapon provides further damage bonuses. When run with optimal comps and builds, she can definitely benefit from an attack percent goblet. There's not always a clear answer as to what you should be running, but the moral of the story here is that attack percent goblets do seem to be becoming more viable and not something that you should continue to overlook when building characters. Save your goblet with good substats as they can outperform the goblet you may think is best in slot. That's all I got for you guys today. If you guys found this video helpful or informative, please consider leaving a like and subscribing to the channel. I put out Genshin videos just like this one every single week. I'll see you guys for the next one. Peace.